What's up guys, Steven from techmaker.tv here. In this episode, we're just gonna make a quick change to our chat application that we developed with Rails 6 and Action Cable. It was pointed out to me in the comments that when you type and you submit a message down here, um, this form is now, first of all, it still says hello, and second of all, the button is disabled, so we're not able to submit anything else. So let's take a quick peek at what's going on here. So if I right click and I inspect, it's gonna pull up the developer tools in Chrome and we can look down here in this input group and we can see here that we have this disabled keyword at the end of our input. So essentially what we wanna do is remove this after the message gets appended here. So, um, and really we wanna remove this after uh, just for this person so we don't really want to do this through our um, our web sockets because then we would do that for everyone so what we need to do is after we submit we just want to uh, re-enable the form for the person who submitted so let's go take a look at the code and see how we could do that so let's look at the actual form which should be down in our views messages form here and you can see here that we've got this, um, we have a form, local true, so on and so forth. We've got um, a hidden field for the room ID, I'm just reviewing what all we did before. Um, so right here, we have our text field, there's no ID or anything on it, and then we have our form submit, also no ID. Let me investigate that one more time just to make sure there's no IDs being automatically added. Um, there is message room ID. Okay, so there's a message room ID on that. And then I think the submit button did not have an ID actually. Okay, looks like that's the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a ID here. And I'm just gonna call it chat button for now. Um, and then what I wanna do is open up our, well first of all, so for this form, let's open up our messages controller. So right here in the create action, we're not rendering anything, we're just submitting this job. And all that's doing essentially, so it submits, disables this form, and then it just returns back nothing basically, just an okay message, um, which is a default. So what we can do is we can come in here and say, remote true and let's now try this again so I'm just gonna type in something and now let's look at our server so if I go back over here I need to actually scroll up so there's no view for this so it's just not doing anything right now um, so what I'm gonna actually do is go back to my um, actually, I probably had to refresh the page. Let me try that one more time with the page refreshed. And let's go back to our terminal one more time. It's a little bit hard to read some of this because there's so much stuff being printed out by the active job. Um, so right here, okay, you see this where it says um, no template found for messages controller create. So when we put in, I'm trying to look up here so that I can find exactly, um, so it's saying processing as HTML, but we've submitted it as remote true. I think if we just add a new file called create.js.erb, and then alert here, we should see that this actually executes. So let's refresh here. Let's just ASDF. And we get messages controller create is missing a template for this request. That is odd. So after a brief Google, it looks like I may have misunderstood how these local things work and how they play with the form width. So form width is kind of a newer thing. Uh, I'm going to say form 4, 
and then get rid of the local true and add just remote true. I might need to do like some content soon on the difference between those two things and I may need to do some research first but this should work so let me try this uh, form 4 that needs to be form 4 message not form uh, not with the model keyword in there okay then let's inspect this and see what this looks like So now we see here that we have this form ID new message. Let me make sure my ID is still what I thought it is down here. Um, input, no, and now it's ID is message content. That's interesting. But anyway, you can see here in our form, we have data dash remote equals true, which will make use of the unobtrusive JavaScript thing. So now if we submit something, we should have an alert message show up. Cool. So really fast, let's just check what that ID was. I need to get better at remembering stuff. So we have message content, and then down here we should have our chat BTN ID. Okay, cool. So now that we've gotten past all of our little mishaps, it should be actually pretty simple to resolve our problem. So what we should be able to do is say, um, um, we'll set a new variable, um, chat button, and we'll say um, document, dot get element by ID and then I'm going to say chat btn and then we'll say uh, chat btn dot disabled equals false and then we'll do the same thing for the input but we just want to clear the text so what we're going to do is say variable um, chat box equals document that I get element by ID and then what was it message content and we'll say chat box dot value equals empty string let's try this okay so let's make sure we refresh the page and I'm just gonna say hello and you can see now I've got a clear text box where I can keep typing and the button is reactivated so I can just keep going Cool, so now this actually worked exactly how we want it to work. Perfect. So the last thing I want to do is just open up a new incognito window and make sure that this is behaving as we expect on uh, sort of everybody's connection here. So if we go into the JavaScript channel uh, and if I just refresh everywhere then we'll have everybody active. That's an interesting thing. So it loaded with this guy deactivated. Uh, so then maybe we have to figure out how to address that. But anyway, so we can say hello. And it shows up over here. And this one works. What I want to do is actually put a little bit of text here. And I want to demonstrate that this is only impacting the person who's typing. So like we don't want to accidentally clear everybody's text boxes. That would be pretty frustrating if you're typing a message and all of a sudden it vanished. So we just say hi there. And you can see there that this guy is left alone and this one is cleared. The reason I took the time to point this out is because you might have been tempted uh, to worry about this in our activity, uh, not in there, in the activity channel JS. So you might have thought, you know what, I'm going to do something when I receive the data but if you did it in here, this is an event that's getting broadcast to everyone, so you could potentially mess up everybody's, uh, inter or basically mess up the interactions between everybody because you would be clearing everybody's chat box or something. So if you're if you're a beginner, I just wanted to go ahead and point that out that that's why we're doing that in this response because in our messages controller, the actual uh, controller response that gets sent out and there's a lot of stuff happening here with naming conventions so if you're new to rails you'll have to do a little bit of digging in but um, you know this is automatically triggering that create.js.erb but it only gets sent back to the person who submitted it so the action cable stuff goes out to everybody and this just goes out to the person who submitted it well that's it for this video um, if you're enjoying this content please subscribe to the channel. Please give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any ideas for things you would like to see me work on, throw those down in the comments. As you can tell, this video was prompted by a comment that I received. So if you leave a comment, I will 
seriously consider actually putting content together for that uh, whatever you mention. And um, but anyway, that's it. I will talk to you in the next episode.